Good morning. Our topic is about the sign and detailing of steel in combined footing. So, our topic is about combined footing. So, what are combined footings? Whenever two or more columns in a straight line are carried on a single spread footing, it is called combined footing. Isolated footings for each column are generally economical. But combined footings are provided only when it is absolutely necessary, as when two columns are close together, causing overlap of adjacent isolated footings. So, economical kapag isolated footings. So, sa isang column may isang footing. Pero, pag mag-overlap yung dalawang footing because they are too adjacent, we are going to make it as a combined footing. Para isang footing, dalawang column or more ang laman ng footing na yun. Or, where soil bearing capacity is low, kailangan natin ng mas malapad na is na kailangan natin ng mas malapad na footing, causing overlap of adjacent isolated footings. Proximity of building line or existing building or sewer adjacent to a building column. O kaya, example, meron tayong adjacent na existing building na hindi natin, hindi natin pwedeng galawin. So, mag adjust yung ating footing. So, sa so pagde-design ng footing, ang talagang ita-target natin is to make a square footing kasi yun yung pinaka-simple na isolated footing. Pero kung may mga restrictions class na hindi pwede ang square isolated footing or any isolated footing, ang gagamitin natin is combined footings. Okay, so combined footings, kailan yun mangyayari class? So, combined footings, example dito sa drawing is that we have two columns on a single footing. So, meron tayo ditong um, plan view and then elevation view. So, kailan nagkakaroon? Example dito, malapit kasi siya sa property line. And, kailan ba? And, there are Combined footings may be what? The combined footings, meron tayong tatlong shape dito. We have rectangular. This one is the rectangular. Itong una, rectangular, trapezoidal, and we have a T-shape combined footing. So, the geometric proportions and shape are so fixed that the centroid of the footing area coincides with the resultant of the column loads. So, the... The resultant of the column loads coincides with the centroid of the footing. Yun yung target natin sa pagde-design ng combined footing class. We are we make sure natin that the that the centroid of the that the centroid of the columns yung load ng columns natin coincide with the centroid of the footing or the resultant of the column loads coincides with the centroid of our footing. The result is a uniform pressure below the entire area of footing. Trapez yun kasi yung target natin, the a uniform pressure. Trapezoidal footing is provided when one column load is much more than the other. So, instead na rectangular, dito sa mas maliit na column, hindi niya kailangan ng, hindi niya kailangan ng wide na footing. Ganyan lang talaga siya para hindi siya ma-overdesign. That's why merong trapezoidal footing. As a result, the both projections of footing beyond the faces of columns will be restricted. So, rectangular footing is provided when one of the projections of the footing is restricted or the width of the footing is restricted. Okay? Next, Type of footing, we have a slab type, slab and beam type, and we have a strap type. So, difference is based on the, nakikita naman sa drawing class, slab type is, meron yung, yung ide-design natin ay yung buong slab. Pag sa strap naman, ang ide-design natin dyan is yung ating strap beam. And then, yung slab niya din. Pag sinabi kasing slab type, yung slab na yun, hawak niya lahat ng footing. Tapos, sa strap naman, 
uh, isolated footings connected by a strap beam. Yung slab and beam naman class is slab type din siya pero merong beam na magko-connect sa ating mga columns. Okay? So, rectangular combined footing, longitudinally, the footing acts as an upward loaded beam is spanning between columns and cantilevering beyond. So, using statics, the shear force and bending moment diagrams in the, in the longitudinal di directions are drawn. Moment is checked at the face of the column. Shear force is critical at a distance d from the faces of the column or at the point of contraflexure. Two-way shear is checked under the heavier column. The footing is also subjected to transverse bending and this bending is spread over a transverse strip near the column. So, for a slab type combined footing, ito yung example natin mamaya. Um, Eh, ganito siya, class. So, para siyang binaliktad na beam and column. So, para siyang binaliktad na beam and column. Parang, exam, parang, eh, paano ba? Pag beam, ganyan. Tapos, meron tayong column. So, para siyang ganito. Na andito yung ating uniform load. So, parang ganyan yung ating yung ating combined footing. So, ang ginagawa natin, di ba, class? So, kapag sa cantilever type, saan tayo naglalagay ng, saan tayo naglalagay ng reinforcement? Ang reinforcement natin dito ay nasa, oh, ang reinforcement natin dito ay nasa bottom. Tapos, sa cantilever naman, dito sa part na to, dito tayo naglalagay ng reinforcement. Kaya kapag babalik ta rin natin yan, dito sa cantilever type, merong reinforcement dyan sa baba. Tapos, dito naman sa part na to ay dyan naman yung reinforcement. Kasi eto yung, etong pink na to, etong line na to, eto yung ating yan yung yan yung pagbend nya. Kaya, pro-provide din natin ng reinforcement dito para hindi magbe-bend pa ganito. Dito naman, pataas naman yung bend niya, kaya maglalagay tayo ng reinforcement sa taas. And then, that is the longitudinal bending. And for transverse bending class, ang reinforcement natin ay nasa bottom. Okay? So, for the critical sections for moment shear, for the for moment class, ang critical section natin ay Dito at the face of the column, section 1-1 and section 2-2. At the face of the column, section 5-5 and section 6-6. So, for one-way shear, ah, saan siya? Section 3 and section 4. Ano yun? The distance from the face of the column. And for critical two-way shear is A, B, C, D. Ano yun? D over 2 distance from the face of the column on all sides. Okay? So, paano tayo maglalagay ng reinforcement for transverse class? Pag ganito siya. At a certain strip lang. At ano yung certain strip na yan? That is what? Yan yung, ito yung. Dito lang tayo maglalagay. At a certain strip. Okay? So, Next naman is ex ah, design step. So, we have design step. So, first, locate the point of application of the column loads on the footing. Kasi, i itututok natin sa resultant para maging uniform. So, locate the point application of the column loads on the footing. Proportion the footing such that the resultant of loads passes through the center of the footing. Compute the area of the footing such that the allowable soil pressure is not exceeded. Number four, calculate the shear force and bending moment at salient points and hence draw shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. Fix the depth of footing from the maximum bending moment. Calculate the transverse bending. Check for the footing for longitudinal shear. Design the reinforcement for the longitudinal moment. Check for development length. Curtail the longitudinal bars. 
draw and detail reinforcement and prepare the bar bending schedule so those are the steps okay so let us solve a re combined rectangular footing a combined rectangular footing supports an exterior column 450 mm center to center equal to 3.6 meters the exterior column having its face along the Okay, mali, na sa baba. Okay, mali yung pag-edit ko. A combined rectangular footing supports an exterior column 450 mm square. So, yung 450 mm, ito, dapat ay andito. Okay? Center to center equal to 3.6 meters. So, Okay. Class, I'm sorry, mali yung pag-edit ko. Editin ko. So, dapat, a combined rectangular footing supports an exterior column, 450mm square, and an interior column. So, ang katuloy niya ay ito. Place at a distance. This is distance. Place at a distance, center to center, equal to 3.6 the exterior column having its face along the property line carries a dead load of 550 and a live load of 350 while the interior column carries a dead load of 900 and 5 ll of 500 kilonewton the bottom of the footing is to be 1.8 meter below the grade allowable soil bearing capacity is 240 kilopascal Weight of soil is 15.74 kN per meter cube and that of concrete is 23.5 kN per meter cube. And F prime C is equal to 20.7 MPa and F Y is 415 MPa.